Hey guys, Ray from Love you RV. So I have another update on my Starlink satellite dish. So I got this, it's over two years ago now. I got first got the first one in 2021 March and uh, did quite a few videos of it. Back then it was still in uh, beta stages. So it was a little flaky, you know, it was kind of iffy in and out sometimes, but overall it did pretty good for us. And I did quite a few updates on that as the service evolved. And then uh, last uh, last year, we were allowed to use it in the States. They opened up cross-border travel. And uh, my last video on it was in December 2022 when I was kind of updating you on the portability of it, which is now not even available. Um, this thing seems to change uh plans every couple of months. I can't even keep up with it. I won't go through all the plans. If you're looking for that, there's a ton of videos on YouTube about the current plans because they're constantly changing and there's several different uh, people that update you on the latest plans. Anyway, I've gotten rid of this round dish and uh, bought a brand new dish, even though the round dish has been working fine. Um, but there were several reasons for me to do that. So that's why I'm just updating you in this video. Uh, let's just give you a quick look where the thing worked for me on that trip south. Now on Vancouver Island, I've always been able to just change my address and keep on the residential plan. But when I added portability plan from the trip south, um, it worked in all these locations really well. I was able to stream videos and no lag on the internet or anything like that. There was one spot just around Sacramento one evening that slowed slowed a bit kind of I guess there was some congestion on the network other than that it pretty well worked all the time with just the odd outage here and there so very happy with that but I noticed um, in my Twitter feed I saw this rural Canada Starlink offer over 70 percent off hardware so instead of paying 759 Canadian I could get the dish for 199 but it was only in select areas of rural Canada so I checked when I got back because that's an awfully good deal and I wanted to get the the newer dish mainly because it's much smaller but it also draws much less energy and with so much off-grid camping that was very important to me um, it's drawn pretty well half the energy so I went online and put my address in um, that I'm staying at an RV park in Campbell River and it's like congratulations your service address is eligible for rural offer um, so I went ahead and ordered it and I'll give you the full price I ended up paying right here so it was 199 they did charge 50 shipping and handling and so 249 before taxes uh, British Columbia's provincial sales tax and general sales tax so total tax 30 so my first payment was 27888 and then the the rural or the the residential rate here is 140 plus tax so i think it comes to about 158 a month canadian for it anyway we'll go uh, up on the roof and i'll give you an idea of the how the the two compare in size and then I'll show you how I have it set up for the the summer here and what kind of power draw I'm getting off of that thing so let's go so there's where I'll mount it longer term it's kind of the highest point on the RV the other dish I used to just throw up there and put a heavy chain on it, but I did have a, a big wind event in the desert that actually blew it off the roof of the RV last winter. It actually kept functioning and it didn't really hurt that old dish. So, But this one I've gotten a bit smarter and I have a, a strap there and a strap it to the vent cover there that's held down pretty firm. It's also a much smaller area so it won't be as affected by the wind as much. I just have the cord coming down through the slide here. Go down and I'll show you how I have the router set up for just now. I just hide the cord behind the rubber there. And then she goes down and then right back up 
through the hole. This is usually where the water hose goes. Uh, my, in this campsite, I have a coax cable going. So it's up through there. I just put a bunch of rags and stuff there to keep rodents or whatever out. And a cold. Here we go. So this is the newer router. Let's see, it's the power supply and the router all in one. Power cord goes in there and then the cable to the dish goes in there. My old one was a little bit different, a little split system. The original had a power box and then two uh, Ethernet ports. One went to the dish and then one would go to the router. So they've kind of simplified it into just one block there. And I've just been testing here to get the wattage and you can see this thing it's drawing sometimes in the low 30 sometimes as high as 50 watts but I think it's like kind of averaging around 40. My uh, big round dish was always right around 80. I'd see it go as low as 60 up to even 100. So let's just see 0.8 kilowatt hours so far and that's 19 hours of runtime. So a lot less uh, wattage. Main, main reason for me to take advantage of this deal and upgrade the dish. This thing I'll probably move. I'm just using it right now for testing. I'll probably move it further in. Kind of probably put it behind this false wall somewhere. Somewhere where we can get uh, the best uh, signal strength on our internal devices. Anyway, that's the latest update to the Starlink system for me. Till next time, Ray from loveyourv.com. Cheers, everyone.